Hello there. I'm Andrew Gaughan and this is my knitting podcast. Thank you so much for joining me again. If you've been watching my past couple, I've been trying to put out about one a month um, for the past four months or so. And if you have been here before, welcome. I'm a knitwear designer and I use this podcast to share with you guys what I've been working on, what plans I have in the future. And I try to spend some time getting into background on why I make different design decisions and just share things that I'm excited about because I just love to talk about knitting. <laughs> so I am going to first talk to you about what I'm wearing right now, which is a pattern that is out today and it's called Junko. And that is named after a bird, Dark Eyed Junko, um, in my area here, Asheville, Western North, in Western North Carolina and the Appalachian Mountains. They live at high altitudes and the place where I knew um, I wanted to take pictures of this pattern, uh, we've seen them there a lot, and that's Mount Mitchell. Um, I didn't pull this up ahead of time. I'm going to pull them up. They're just so cute. Don't worry, I pulled up lots of other stuff ahead of time, so this isn't going to be... This is what they look like. It's kind of similar colors to the sweater and they're just little cuties. And I really like bird watching. I just like nature and hiking in general, um, but I've really enjoyed bird watching. It's just like a way to just have a reason to spend a lot of time out in nature, being quiet and looking at things and listening. So um, I definitely have an affinity for birds, but it's mostly that they are one of the most easily observable animals. <laughs> okay, so this is a raglan, as you can probably tell. And it is worked in a type of color work that is called mosaic knitting. I'll come up and let you see it a little close up. So it creates this really cool textured patterns. And instead of carrying two different yarns in a round like you would in stranded color work. It is worked by slipping stitches that you don't want in a color that you have working. Um, so that way you only are working in one color per round. So it's a pretty fundamentally different way of constructing the color work uh, than stranded knitting or of course also intarsia. Um, and as you can see, it kind of creates some extra texture. So it's basically just stockinette because it's, you know, knit in the round, every stitch is a knit stitch, but a lot of those stitches are then slipped. So it kind of creates a denser textured fabric, which I really like. Um, and so the whole sweaters worked in this repeating motif and the way it's constructed is bottom up. And that is intentionally so that when you're knitting this round body, you get nice and comfortable with the pattern. So if you haven't knit mosaic knitting before, which a number of the testers for this pattern hadn't, um, and they reported that exactly what I hoped would be the case was true in that by the time you knit this whole body, you're really comfortable with the pattern and the motif itself. So when you're doing the increases in the sleeves and the decreases in the yoke, uh, it's a reasonable, challenge because you already understand the base pattern really well. And so if you are a newsletter subscriber, you have already received the email announcing this release and the discount code for newsletter subscribers. And if you don't already know, every time I release a new pattern, my newsletter subscribers get a special discount. So you should join my newsletter. <laughs> and I have it set up so that through the end of the release period, which is this Sunday, um, if you join the newsletter now, you'll still get the code. So you don't have to be on the newsletter the second the release goes out. I temporarily changed my welcome email to include the code to make sure new newsletter subscribers also get that. And there, yes, the other thing that I wanted to tell you about this is that the yarn I used in this is Bare Naked Wools' is Kent DK. 
and Bare Naked Wools is kindly having a sale on this yarn to celebrate the release. So anyone who wants to can get 10% off of Kent DK. Um, I think the code is Kent DK 10. I will put it below. Um, and that's valid on any quantity of that yarn from their website. I personally reached out to these guys to ask to collaborate them because I had seen their work and I think their yarn's really cool. Um, they all, they have all their colors. <laughs> I'm just like looking at it myself in the screen. Um, all of their colors are naturally occurring. So none of them are dyed. And so that means that both this light color and this dark color came from sheep that are that color or some of the colors are probably blends of different sheep. Um, and they not only have this nice charcoal color and light um, gray color, but they have creamy tones, brown tones. It's really, really cool just to see the ra range of colors that are possible just from naturally occurring colors in the sheep. Um, and if you don't know much about dyeing, there's all kinds of different dyeing processes out there, but generally dyeing can be like the most um, environmentally impactful stage. Uh, and it depends what kind of dyes it is, how... I just don't want to... <laughs> I'm trying to be careful because like people do natural dyeing and yeah, it uses water and materials, but it's all natural materials. But um, for a lot of yarn, the dyeing process definitely has a negative environmental impact. So it's really cool to be able to see and support yarns that are able to offer a wide range of colors without needing to do any dye process at all. Um, of course, I worked with lots of all kinds of dyed yarns, but I just think it's kind of a fun thing. And they have lots of different bases, not just this one. Um, this is a Merino Romney blend and it's DK weight, but they have the same blend in other weights and they have other blends. Um, I don't know if all the bases, but this one is all sourced and spun in the US too. So I think that's really cool. Um, and I'm always really excited to partner with yarn companies that I think are doing cool things like that. I have some notes here. So if I glance down here, cause it's really easy. I have like 12 different things I wanna get to. So it's easy for me to get off track. So I'm gonna keep making sure I'm staying on track here. The other main announcement I have is that we're having a knit along. Um, this was not intentionally, like originally planned when I released the Essential Beanie, but um, very sweet person Camry of Golden Hour Knitwear reached out to me saying she had been hoping to host a knit along and thought that the Essential Beanie would be a great pattern for it. So if you haven't seen it before, um, the Essential Beanie is a pattern I released just a couple weeks ago and it's a two by two rib beanie, but the pattern includes instructions for six different yarn weights. So I made a sample in each of the six yarn weights and I think it's a perfect little um, pattern for a knit along, especially this time of year. Uh, I am starting on a very small amount of gift knits that I'm doing and I know a lot of other people um, love to do gift knits and this is a perfect pattern for that and it's good to get started so you're not crunch knitting at the last minute um because it can be easy to make knitting not fun when you're trying to knit on too tight of a deadline even if it's your own self-imposed deadline so uh and Camry's encouraging people to use their stash or scrap she has a version oops she has a version she's making and she's holding a bunch of different yarns together to make a bulky weight which is included uh instructions for in the pattern bulky weight um and she's actually, I think, also doing a hand spun, <clears throat> excuse me, hand spun version as well. And I am also doing a version that is using up leftover yarns I had. So this is using two strands of mohair and a DK weight yarn that I had left over from my Funfetti design. And it is Brooklyn Tweeds Arbor and I wish you could squish it. It's so fluffy. I've had multiple people see me knit this and go, that's really fluffy. And I'm like, yeah, that's the plan. So um, when my mom saw it, she really, really liked it. So I'm going to be ma making her a matching one as soon as I'm done. And 
and I've had plans since I planned the design. I have this yarn that I'm going to knit my partner one in and I just have not gotten around to that, <laughs> but it's going to happen. So hopefully maybe the knit along will be a little encouragement for me to do that. And so like many knit alongs have, we have prizes and uh, I'm really glad to be offering the prizes and um, especially because I've heard a lot of talk about like the commitment and people having different time constraints um, for knit alongs to like make it accessible. And for our knit along, all you have to do to participate is just start working on one. So there's no requirement to finish it. There's no difference in how many you make. Um, all you have to do is to post a whip, which is work in progress or finished object, post to Instagram with the hashtag the essential beanie cal, which I'll write below along with everything else, um, your names, design names, that discount code for the yarn before. I'll write that all below um, so you can make sure you're getting exactly what I'm saying. Oh my gosh, shadows make me think I have something on my face. I'm gonna, that I have to start re-recording, but I think I'm good. So we got prizes and they are hand-dyed yarn from Camry. I think she's actually gonna have a couple different hand-dyed yarn um, pieces. She, there are things she's gonna dye over the process of the knit along, but she was talking about um, a sock set or mini skein set, possibly both. And then I'm offering one person is going to win a copy of all of my published patterns, um, which by the time that prize is awarded will include Junko and all my other um, self-published patterns. So that includes everything I've published besides one thing that's in a magazine that I don't have the individual rights to yet. And I am putting up a third prize, <laughs> which is a $50 gift card to the local yarn store of your choice. So. Um, I wanted to do that to support local yarn stores, but then uh, I can't know where the winner will be. So uh, whoever wins can just tell me what their favorite local yarn store is and I will purchase them a $50 gift card. So uh, I think that's pretty good prizes for all you have to do is just start working on the beanie. Um, and we also just put together a Slack channel for chatting if you want to go in there and um, share thoughts, ideas, questions, just your excitement about what you're working on. Um, I'll link that below as well. And so I think I'm going to start, I'm going to have a sip of my tea for my enormous mug. <laughs> this is my normal tea mug. Um, but I realized when I got the camera out how enormous it looks and it is pretty enormous. So, I think that this one was finished like right after I did my last podcast. This is the second sample I've made of a design that I released last fall, which is called Kioni. And it is a fingering weight one by one rib. So it has this really fine all over texture that gives it the sort of texture of a waffle knit. And it's crew neck, raglan shaping, work top down. And the sweater is so, so wearable. I think the yarn weight paired with the texture just makes it really like, it's nice and warm, but you're never gonna be getting too hot. And I think that it fills a lot of time that I wanna be wearing sweaters. It's like the appropriate thing for. Um, and so I've already been wearing it a lot since I finished it. My original sample was in a beautiful caramely brown color, which I really love, but I kind of realized I was trying to go with like really neutral colors for a while when I was starting knitting, because I was thinking if I want to spend all this time where knitting a garment, I want it to go with everything. I want to be able to wear it all the time. And I thought that meant it should be as neutral as possible. Um, but I like colors, <laughs> which is funny because I know I'm wearing, I like this. It's got two neutral colors, but it's such a bold pattern. It doesn't really feel like, oh, it's just a plain brown sweater or something to me. Um, 
So I really, really like the brown sample, but I wanted one that still felt like a, a neutral color and that it wasn't something really bright, but um, something that actually had like more of a color to it. So I love this deep foresty green. This colorway is called Fern. And it's actually, unfortunately, in a base that is discontinued because the mill that was making it closed down, but the dyer for uh, Larissa of Forest Lane Fiber Co. has been working to source a new yarn to replace this base. And she's actually working a sample of Keone in this base. And I think that it's gonna be released quite soon here with her new fall update, if I'm correct. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, I'll be, once she has that new base out, I'll be sure to share it. Um, and I know she's really, really thoughtful about sourcing her yarn. So I know she's going to find a great source with high quality, high ethical standards. Um, oh, I piled everything up, but I don't have my one sweater because I've been wearing it so much. It's in my bedroom. I'm going to go grab it. Okay, this is my next finished object and I'm so happy with it. Uh, you may have just seen this. I just put out a test call. This is the front porch pullover. Oh, I mentioned this before, but I'm saving. Ooh, I did not fold it well. I got a big line in it. Um, I'm saving up for a nicer camera, so I'm just filming with my iPhone. I know the it's really hard to just see how gorgeous this yarn is and texture, but we'll get there one day, guys, so don't worry. But um, I took nicer pictures in natural lighting for the test coat, so I'll just go ahead and show you one of the pictures, and then you can see the fit. It's so cute! It's so cozy. I really love it. Um, this is worked in Knitting for Olive's Fingering Weight Merino, plus their soft silk mohair. And it is such a nice combination. It's really, really light, especially for something that's so, it's very oversized because it's a drop shoulder. So it has lots of ease, both in the arms and the body, but the fabric is so nice and drapey and light that it's really perfect. Um, and I really wanted a sweatshirt feel with this and I think it accomplished just that being like fancy, fuzzy, cozy, cloud-like sweatshirt. So um, if you're watching this when, uh, I think I can't have mow hair in my mouth when I was holding that up to my face. Excuse me. Um, if you're watching this close to when it's come out, I might still be looking for a couple testers. I think um, the sizes through about F or so have filled up. Um, I think G and up are still going to be available. And that's about equivalent to a triple XL and up. Um, and if you are triple XL and up and test patterns and are interested in testing my patterns, just know you have a permanent spot because I never am able to fill those sizes. Um, and unfortunately I do have to turn away, like not accept a lot of people who are sizes B, C, D, um, which is equivalent roughly to small, medium, large, because those are really common sizes. Um, and I'm trying really hard to make sure that my patterns are graded well for the upper range of the sizes, but I don't really get a lot of active feedback because I don't have a lot of testers of those sizes. And I'm working to do what I can to make sure um, people with those sizes have access to participate in my test knits. This one is a 12 week test knit. And I do have a limited number of coupon codes for knitting for all of that they're providing for 25% off. Um, they're just providing it for six test knitters, but I'm going to try to distribute that with like um, financial need and size, therefore quantity of yarn needed. Um, so that is to say, I 
love and appreciate all testers so much. You guys are amazing, but I'm always, always on the lookout for our testers at the top of the size range because I really appreciate that feedback. So um, if you're interested in testing and those kinds of sizes and there's any like barriers you personally have to testing, feel free to like DM me on Instagram or email me. Um, and I wanna try to help make sure that um, testing is accessible to those knitters. And if, if you're not one of those sizes and you're not understanding what I mean by that, but um, what I mean by that is, for example, I think most of my sweaters, the bust circumference is going to be twice as large for the smallest size as for the largest size I offer. So knitting is going to take at least twice as long and yarn costs are probably going to be at least twice as much. So that's a much larger investment of your time and money and energy. And I know that knitting is a large investment for everybody. Um, so that's why I just want to kind of extra be keeping a lookout on making sure the test nets are accessible to people at the top of the size range. I hope to in the future be able to have a um, amount of yarn stipends that I can give to testers to help with that. Okay. Oh, I had one more thing I want to say about this. So I named this sweater front porch pullover and that was directly inspired by a comment on my last YouTube video. So thank you, Isabella. That was a really great name. I think I described it as I wanted something that had like a cozy, of something that had evoked a cozy, comfortable, relaxed feel. And I really like that. And I personally spend a really large amount of time sitting out on my front porch knitting and eating and reading. And I love, uh, especially this time of year, being cozied up in something comfortable and warm. Um, so I thought that was a really perfect name. So Isabella, I'm gonna try to find you. You can't message people on YouTube, but if you're watching this, um, cause don't comment your personal information, but my information is on my um, website. You could DM me on Instagram or email me. Um, and I'd love to give you a free copy of the pattern when it comes out at, as a thank you, a small thank you for your very cute suggestion that I went with. So we're gonna get onto whips here. And I have been working a lot on this one. This is my second sample of Funfetti. Eee! And I'm so happy with how it's turning out. I think I might like it even more than my first one, um, but that might just be that I'm liking something new. Um, so my first Funfetti, if you didn't see, it was worked in a light base with all kinds of colorful speckled lines. And so I wanted to go for the opposite look with this one to show uh, how different it can look with. So this is a very, uh, dark gray charcoal um, I guess I don't know exactly what counts as a true black I would say it's a black but it's not the blackest black that exists um, and I'm using four different colors for my contrast colors and unlike my first one where I did a random repeat of many different colors this time I'm doing a regular repeat of these four colors and I really like how this one, it's like a pale sea foam blue. It's called sea glass. I like how that one like really stands out. You see those lines of that color really pop out at you. But then when you see it up close, you can really appreciate all the different colors. So all of this is worked in Arbor from Brooklyn Tweed. And Whenever I am designing something, I always want to make multiple samples because I'm like, oh, it would look so cool in these colors or it'd be cool to show what it would be like um, if you made this change. But it's <laughs> it takes twice as much time to knit two samples, turns out. Uh, and it already takes a lot of time to design the patterns and get them out there. So I've been trying to steer away from doing two samples as much as I can 
but it's difficult. Um, so I just wanna, I just want to. And, but this one I had to because Brooklyn Tweed, who I am collaborating with, kindly offered two samples of yarn support, which is not something I've ever had before. Usually if I do a second sample, even if I did get yarn support for the first one, I'll purchase the yarn for the second, but they offered two quantities of yarn for yarn support. So I was like, I can't not do it. <laughs> but I'm really, really glad I did for this one with the color work. Uh, it just really has a totally different look. Um, if you're not familiar with the first funfetti, I'll just show it to you real quick so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, how different. So this is the first sample. So I also love, and I used all kinds of different scrappy colors for this. That's so different. Love it. So this yarn is currently in, this pattern, excuse me, is currently in testing and it will be coming out in December. So if you're interested, keep an eye out. And as I said before, with my release discount for Junko, that goes for all my patterns. So if you're uh, having your eye on a pattern that's gonna come out, if you sign up for my newsletter, not only will you be notified as soon as it's released, you will also receive release discount. So um, that's definitely, I sh always share all my releases on Instagram, but newsletter is definitely the best way to be sure you never miss a release. And that's the only place you're gonna get that release discount. Okay, so that's my first whip. I have a sleeve left and I am leaving in two days for a family trip and Rhinebeck trip that are being combined into one. And I'm hoping to have it done when I leave, which would be pretty reasonable because I have like three quarters of a sleeve to do but I want to finish it and also film tutorials on how to deal with the ends. And that is a big stretch. <laughs> so we're gonna see if that works. Um, that might not happen. I might have to deal with the ends, wear it to Rhinebeck, undo the ends and then do the tutorial. I don't know. Um, but I already have for my testers a tutorial linked on how to deal with the ends, which is a method of braiding them, but it doesn't include a whole bunch of details. I saw uh, myself as I was doing the ends on my first one, there were several like little things that they didn't really cover how they dealt with them. And I had a couple of testers ask me um, questions about that. So I wanna put together my own for the release, um, but that might have to wait. But yes, my goal of finishing that is because I really want to wear that one to Rhinebeck. And I'll definitely also be wearing this. Um, and if you are also going to Rhinebeck and you see me, come say hello to me. Um, I'm the person who looks like this and is going to be wearing one of those two sweaters probably. Maybe this one. Um, I experience a lot of social anxiety. So I'm like really excited, but also quite nervous to be around so many people, but all the knitting people I've met are always just so welcoming and nice that hopefully it's just only oodles of fun. <laughs> and I'm gonna be glad to be staying with some family in the area. So I'll have some time um, to kind of recoup, recharge every evening after all the social activities. And this is my first time going to any kind of big yarn event. So that will be very, very exciting and fun. Um, and I will tell you all about how it went when I see you back here in November for that podcast. So let me see. I think that's all the whips we got going. Let's see. No, I have another one. See, but this one is like, it's a whip. But I think I'm going to unravel it. Oh, these yarns are such a mess. I'm gonna show you these colors, but. How did I leave this such a mess? I was working on this and then suddenly stopped it to go work on that Funfetti sample. And I kind of left it in a 
chaotic state and I was feeling a little like, oh, I don't know if this is going how I want. And like, so I just like dropped it. Um, okay. So I'm working a colorwork cowl in these six colors. These are all good wool from Pearl Soho and it's so nice. I really like it. They all have um, kind of a bit of a heathered look to them, which I really like and appreciate. And I like how they all look together a lot. And so this cowl is going to be a color work cowl that is worked in a circle. This looks really intense with this <laughs> on. Um, it's going to be nice and wide. I'm going to have an option for a single loop or a double loop and option to twist it when you rejoin it or not. And then I'm also um, going to do a scarf version, which I'll talk about that in a second. But this one, so I have these six colors that now I've worked. And my plan was to work them in random different combinations. So I just tried to work them in as random an order as I could. Um, and I was going to continue to do it randomly throughout so it looks really mixed up. Um, but I love the four colors together so much, the six colors together so much. But I think the order that they went in, in the random, just is not, I'm not loving it. So I think what I'm going to do is pick an intentional way of doing the colors, which I think I'm going to do these two together in the first row. These two together in the second row. And then these two together. The dark blue and the purple together in the third row. So that it will go a rainbow gradient. And then repeat it so we'll start back over with pink. Because um, I thought that the mixed up look would look really good. But I just don't think I'm, I don't think I'm excited about it. So... Um, and I know this looks chaotic, but what's going on here is I'm knitting in the round. So I'm knitting a tube, but the cowl is going to lay flat and it's going to be color work on both sides. And then all these ends, um, floats are going to be hidden inside. And then at the beginning here, I have a provisional cast on. And when the cowl is the final length, the end stitches are going to be sewn together with these stitches to make a continuous loop. Um, and I am really happy with the triangles. I was swatching in just two colors and I really liked it. So I think the triangles I'm good with, it's just the, how these colors are looking. It's looking, I thought random would be fun, but I'm just like, it's too random. So I'm gonna restart that. I'll be working on that on my trip. Um, this yarn is so nice to work with. I think it's really perfect for color work and a really special benefit of this type of construction so that the floats are on the inside is that even though for the triangle at this point you're going across seven stitches so you do have quite a long float in the back. Um, the reason that you want to catch floats is so they're not catching on your fingers or earrings or glasses or whatever when you pull it on. Um, but all those floats are going to be hidden inside the cowl entirely, never possibly able to snag on anything. So you never have to catch any floats, even though you're working a larger color work motif. You just have to make sure as you work it that you're leaving your float nice and um, comfortably stretched out, which I'll note in the pattern. Um, and it's with a bigger motif like this, you're going to get more, it's not going to lay flat. You're gonna get more of this kind of crinkling up, um, but you can always steam or block something part of the way through to make sure that it's coming out the way you like. I would normally say your swatch is already go always gonna make sure you know how, um, make sure that you know how it's gonna turn out after blocking. But in my one exception <laughs> to my adamant support of swatching, for an accessory that doesn't need to fit, like an accessory, even like a hat, it needs to fit. So I still recommend swatching, but a cowl or scarf, you don't need to swatch. You don't. And that's the one time, probably that or a blanket. 
or shawl would be the times I would say that if you don't want to swatch, that's completely reasonable. If the dimensions turn out slightly different than they're supposed to, that's not a problem at all. The only issue would be is if your gauge was tight or loose enough that you didn't like your fabric, but you'll probably be able to see that pretty well um, as soon as you start knitting and you could adjust if you are feeling that way. So like I said, that's gonna be the cowl version, colorful rainbow cowl. And I, <laughs> even though I said not to, I did exactly what I said I shouldn't do. And I bought yarn for a second sample because I really wanted to show it um, both in neutral colors and in the scarf version. Um, I thought it would be fine originally to just leave the scarf version up to the imagination. I think uh, knitters could picture if they see a cowl what the same pattern will look like in a scarf. Um, but I'm like, I don't even have a hand knitted scarf. And there's so many beautiful neutral colors of this yarn. So I went ahead and I got yarn for a second sample, but it's like a totally different version. So I think that that's really reasonable. Um, and I got a I got four colors. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I now have planned for this, like repeat the same um, pairings over time, uh, not randomize it. And I have like one really light color. I think I have a really light gray, a dark gray, a tan and a golden brown. But they have arrived back at my mom's house who is, and that's where I'm going in just a couple days. So as soon as I arrive, I'll have the yarn there waiting for me. I was anxious. I didn't want to ship it here and then leave for my trip and not have it. So I'll have a surprise of yarn I ordered waiting for me as soon as I arrive there. Um, honestly, working on that sample is probably a little overly ambitious because I have plans of doing this whole sample. And I also have another plan of what I'm going to be working on over the course of my trip, which is more knitting for olive silk mohair and merino paired together um this is the exact same combination i used for my front porch pullover and i loved it so much um i knew i would love to make other sweaters with it and i have a wedding coming up that i'm attending in michigan in november which having been to michigan in march and it was I'm quite sure the coldest temperatures I've ever experienced were early March in Michigan. I think it was, I think it got below zero degrees Fahrenheit during the daytime. Um, so that was a lot. So I'm, I'm a bit apprehensive and I was a bit nervous about what to wear. So I want to make sure that I'm nice and comfortable and warm. So why not knit myself a sweater? <laughs> and the reason I'm knitting a sweater instead of wearing one I already have is I wanna make sure it's something that feels really fancy to me. And um, I did not want to design something for this because I, with a design, you know, I might have to rip out, change my mind. And I want something that someone already designed. I know it's how it's gonna turn out. I know how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna knit a sweater that I've had in my would love to knit queue for quite a while. And that is the Foxberry sweater from Sari Norlin. And I have this right here. So it is designed for this yarn. And she worked it in actually a color very similar. Um, it's not the exact same color, I don't think, um, but quite similar color to what I, here's the name. Um, a quite similar color to what I worked my front porch pullover in. Uh, but this is a circular yoke sweater that has a beautiful lace motif. I think it's also cables. I don't know if those are cables or just twisted stitches, but it's got lace, bobbles, some cable type stitches all together in that yoke. And then it's echoed again on the sleeve. And I think it looks very elegant and I think it will be appropriate for the wedding. And I don't know why, but this just felt like, this is their dusty artichoke color, which if you're familiar for knitting for all of, I think is like a kind of iconic knitting for all of color. It's like a gray green, um, but I think it will be elegant. And I also got some nice earrings 
to wear. Oh, did you notice? <laughs> I had my ears pierced when I was a teenager. I had three piercings per ear, um, but I've had them out for the past five years and I decided I want them back. So I got my ears re-pierced. I don't know if they really needed it. I probably could have just gotten it through those old holes, but I didn't want to risk that. So I got them re-pierced and I got some fun, um, nice earrings to wear. So I'm excited about that. And in case you want to know a little bit of my backstory, uh, about five years ago, I was like, I need to be the most minimalist ever. I don't want to consume anything. I don't want to have any belongings. And um, I realized that if you were one person doing that, it's usually not going to be a huge change and you're just gonna be living a very different life than everyone in the society around you. So I'm trying, I'm working on now being like, I wanna be minimalist. I wanna be very conscious about my consumption um, and what I own and, and what I purchase and um, where those things are coming from. But I don't need to have no jewelry or not participate in things that I do enjoy, like adorning myself. So um, if you wanted to know why I just got my ears pierced, that's the backstory. I bet you were dying to know. Okay, so let me see. I think I just have one last thing that I want to show you at this point. Yes, okay. So this is something I'm extremely excited about. Um, so you've heard me say collab this, collab that. So uh, as a independent knitwear designer, I like to reach out to yarn companies and um, ask to work with them. And usually that is in the form of them providing yarn for the sample. And then it's like a mutually beneficial situation that the pattern coming out is like an advertisement of their yarn. It shows an idea of what a knitter can make with it. It might expose new knitters to it. Um, and of course for me, then I get yarn for the sample. Sometimes they also promote the pattern, sometimes not. It depends on the yarn company. Um, and this is a yarn company since the very beginning I, of when I started knitting, I was like, oh, everything they make is so beautiful. It's just like every color they do is perfect. And I just want to live in their yarn. Um, and that is Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And I'm doing a collaboration with them in this beautiful color. This is their Recollect Sport Base. And this is the colorway Pretty Shield. And um, this is a sport weight base and it's 100% Montana and Wyoming Rambouillet. And it's made from a mix of white and black sheep. So it's uh, the undyed color is a sort of pale gray. And that adds this really extra depth um, and richness to the colors when they're over dyed on that. And I used this yarn purchased that I purchased from my local yarn store to make the sport weight version of my essential beanie pattern. And I loved it so much. And I love the, um, this colorway is called porch pumpkin. I love the really subtle, uh, tonal property of the yarn, like the really little bit of color changes. And I just think they're such a cool yarn company. And so I was like, I'm doing it. I'm going to ask him. They'll collaborate with me. It's working. <laughs> so, um, and the sweater I have planned to knit with this yarn, I'm very excited about. It is actually somewhat inspired by Keone, like my own pattern. Um, what I, cause I really love this broken rib, but as I s said, and um, you can obviously see pretty well here, you get a little distance away. Um, the camera is making this even more extreme, but the texture is on a, such a small scale it kind of blends away at a distance. Um, and I do really like that. I think it's really nice, but I really like the up close detail of broken rib. So it's like um, stockinette columns um, alternating with garter columns. So I am going to work this sweater also in broken rib, but it's gonna be either two by two or three by three. I'm thinking three by three. So it's a bigger panel of stockinette and that a panel of garter and worked in a sport weight. The gauge will be larger, 
Um, so I want a more visually impactful texture with this. And um, it's also going to be a raglan, top-down raglan like that one. Um, but I'm going to do a very different neckline. I'm going to do a pretty deep v-neck. Um, and I might do it even a little bit more cropped than that one. And I think I'm going to make the sleeve shaping a bit different, make it a bit um, more gradual sleeve shaping that's gathered at the arm. Not like a whole balloon sleeve, but um, more in that direction than a classic taper. Um, and all of this is going to come together to be what I envision as a perfect pull on over everything. Um, I feel like I say that a lot, but a really great layering piece because this is going to come out in March. Um, so I want it to be a sweater that's really perfect for transitional times where um, you could wear it over a tank top and then in the middle of the day it might get warm enough that you can take it off and just be in your tank top and or you could throw it on in the evening um and i know that i spend a lot of the year doing that especially here in Asheville, uh there's really big cha temperature changes throughout the day a lot of the time so even sometimes during like summer months i would want to wear a light sweater if i was out in the early morning because it cools down quite a bit um but you don't need something heavy. <clears throat> so this is my like kind of ideal version of that. And I'm so excited to work on this. So probably when I get back from my trip, this will be my main focus um, and work on that. I think I did it. I think I showed you guys all the things I've finished, I'm working on and not everything I've planned, but my immediate plans, but I'm scheming for even farther in the future than that one. So. Um, but I'll wait to show you guys the yarn and I and tell you about the ideas for those when we get a bit closer. So thank you. Thank you so much for sitting through and watching this. I'm um, really trying to get more comfortable with my podcast. So um, I will really appreciate any feedback you guys have always what parts you really like hearing. Um, if you have any suggestions of things you'd like for me to include, what I could do better. I know I got to just work on my ums and my looking aways, but we're doing it. <laughs> we're trying. We're going to try to get better as we go. Um, but I really just fundamentally love getting to sit down and talk about knitting and designing. And this format lets me get more into kind of nitty gritty and details uh, than something like an Instagram post or even a newsletter. So that's really why I want to delve into this format and make it happen. So thank you for joining me here. Make sure that you subscribe because I'm going to put putting one of these out every month. And then you'll also see um, when I put out tutorials, I have a couple so far, like I said, that braiding one is going to be coming um, for braiding ends. And if you are like, what are you talking about? Then keep an eye out for the tutorial and then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you in November. Bye.